Hi everybody and welcome to the seventh video in the Mental Architecture series based off of my book Mental Architecture Building the Mind One Moment at a Time which is available exclusively on Amazon at a discount for Kindle and at a discount also for the paperback. Today marks the seventh episode of this series and we are continuing to work in chapter two which is no point in time and today we're going to be talking about the effects of drugs on time perception. There are a lot of researchers out there who are curious about how using drugs affects people's sense of time. Obviously drugs like Advil and Tylenol aren't going to do much to anybody's sense of time, but when we take a look at other drugs like morphine derived drugs or certain um, psychoactive drugs, that's where the curiosity comes in because these drugs can distort your senses in such a way that they make you see certain things that you've never seen before or in a different way. And certainly you can imagine that one of the things that would change would be time perception. If you think of some of Pink Floyd's songs, you can kind of um, understand that uh, there's been a lot of experience with time dilation or the sense of time not existing or other kinds of things happening. But in my book, I talk about the research that was used to kind of quantify people's sense of time. Can we see how they reproduce time in, in a lab setting? So do they make time intervals seem longer or shorter than they are? Can we ask them to estimate time in a lab? So how long do you think that that lasted if something was going on? So things like that is what the researchers that I looked at for my book were interested in. So the researchers use the terms underestimation and overestimation to refer to different ways in which the subjects in their studies um, experience time. So underestimation is used to describe time intervals where the subjective experience of it is significantly shorter or a little bit shorter than the actual experience as measured by a timekeeping device. Overestimation would be instances where the amount of time that passed would seem to be a lot longer than it actually was. So. One of the research studies that I talk about in my book involves about 30 subjects that were either um, addicted to uh, morphine-based drugs like opium or opioids or heroin and subjects who were not. And so that was the control group. And they were presented with a very simple task. So there was a lamp that was shown on a screen on a computer and that lamp would remain on for two to maybe 24 seconds. And during that time, there would be certain emotional uh, messages that would appear on the screen that would be intended to distract the person who was um, in the study. So this test was known as the time reproduction test. So basically the participants had to, after watching this lamp on the screen and being distracted by these emotional messages which were there to keep them from counting in their head by the way, they were then asked to press and hold on a key on their keyboard to try to reproduce the time interval that they had just witnessed with the lamp. And this occurred seven times in a row. So the researchers could get a pretty good idea of what these people were doing. The second test was known as a delay estimation test. And this test was pretty simple. There was a red dot on the screen that the subjects were asked to look at. And then that dot moved in a circular pattern at a regular rate until about two thirds of the way where it disappeared behind a blue screen. The subjects were asked to estimate when that uh, red dot would appear again. So they had to kind of develop, have a sense of time in their head of when this dot was going to reappear. So they, uh, the researchers also looked at that test to determine um, things about their time perception. The third and the final test was called the time discrimination test. And in this test, the subjects were shown two images, one after another, that appeared on the screen. And of course, they were shown a series of these. The first image was an image from nature, something like that, and then that would appear for a certain amount of time and then be replaced by an image that had something to do with drugs, specifically the kinds of drugs that the subjects were addicted to, which were the morphine-derived drugs, the opioids, the um, heroin, that kind of stuff. Um, so the subjects were shown the, the first image for about 2,380 milliseconds, or just a little over two seconds. That was the one of nature. And the second image, which was of the drug-based paraphernalia or imagery, that they were shown for 2,000 milliseconds. Now, the threshold for where you can actually see something and be aware that you're seeing it is around 380 milliseconds. So both 
of the presentations of the images well exceeded that, but they were still short enough to, um, you know, be meaningful. So it wasn't like they were on the screen for long enough that someone could really count them. So all three of these tests were analyzed separately and then everything was kind of combined together to make a final analysis. So the results of the study showed that the drug addicted individuals committed time overestimation um, errors on both the time reproduction test and the time estimation test. So if you remember, that's the one with the lamp on the screen and the emotional distractions and the one with the circle, um, the two thirds of a circle where the dot disappears and then they're supposed to estimate when it reappears. Interestingly, the people on the, or the non-drug addicted individuals did not commit any time estimation errors that were significant on either of those two tests. But there was a really weird result where the drug addicted individuals showed no difference at all between the images of the um, drug paraphernalia versus the natural images, but the non-drug addicted individuals had time underestimation errors with the drug paraphernalia where they felt like it went by a lot faster than it did. The researchers' hypothesis about the reasons why the drug addicted individuals had time overestimation errors where they thought things went on a lot longer than they did was because morphine derived drugs are known to slow down people's reaction times. And so with a slower reaction time, that ends up causing time overestimation. The most likely explanation for why the non-drug addicted individuals uh, underestimated the time um, discrimination test with the images is because the drug paraphernalia or drug related images would, would typically conjure up some negative connotations for them. So they would in automatically like subconsciously best, uh, assume that that uh, moment went by a lot quicker than it actually did. Now the reasons why these results with the non-drug addicted individuals were so surprising is because typically in other studies, when you show images that are frightening or threatening to an individual, usually they, they undergo time overestimation where it seems like it took a lot longer than it did. And you might've had one of these experiences whenever, if you've been in like extreme, a state of extreme fear or felt threatened, you felt like that time just took forever, that it just everything just slowed down. Um, and so maybe the images in the study just weren't that threatening. They just, maybe they just didn't like them very much. So there, there's something else that could be studied there between certain fear-based images or, or images that people just don't like. So there's a lot that remains unknown about that. So as a counterpoint to the uh, morphine derived drugs that are considered to be downers, researchers also have recently considered studying psilocybin LSD, these kinds of drugs, um, psilocybin, for those of you who don't know, um, is the uh, term for shrooms. Uh, these kind of drugs are different. They act differently in the brain. Um, psilocybin is known to be a serotonin agonist. So serotonin is typically associated with happy, happiness and alertness and those kind of feelings. So um, some research has shown that people who take psilocybin actually experience um, much shortened periods of time. So they would commit in really gross time underestimation um, where something would seem to happen much more quickly, almost the opposite of what we were just describing um, than it actually did. And so researchers uh, actually conducted a study um, using microdoses of LSD. Now note, I said microdoses. We don't really know what the effects of large doses of LSD would be. It'd probably be a little hard to sanction a study like that right, right now. But with microdosing with LSD, they found some interesting things. So remember that with psilocybin, there's studies that show that individuals engage in time underestimation. So researchers hypothesize that that might happen with LSD. And so they designed a study where they recruited groups of individuals, widely wide age ranges all the way from, I think, like 48 to 75 and they gave them either five, um, 10 or 20 micrograms of LSD, so it's fairly small amounts, and then had them complete two tasks. The first task was a time reproduction task, very similar to the one from the uh, morphine-derived drug study where they were shown a blue circle for a certain amount of time, and then they had to press a key and try to reproduce the interval in which that occurred. The second test was more of a holistic, um, 
a set of questions they were asked about 21 22 questions about their subjective mental state and then researchers analyzed that data what the researchers actually found was quite surprising in both the um, time reproduction test and also the um, subjective analysis question analysis the uh, subjects basically showed evidence of time overestimation so things seem to slow down and take longer than they actually did and so this happened most often around 10 mil uh, 10 micrograms around that dose and so the researchers thought that you know unlike psilocybin which is a serotonin agonist lsd is a dopamine agonist and so they thought that maybe that as certain doses of LSD actually help people to concentrate and focus their attention better. But researchers caution that this effect tends to wear off over time because the body does build up a resistance to LSD the more often it's used. But that was definitely an interesting finding and there have been studies going all the way back I think to the 70s or, or 80s about the uses of microdose LSD in certain psychiatric conditions. Um, a lot of that research still to this day remains controversial, but it is very interesting to see just how drugs like um, LSD and psilocybin can play with a person's sense of time. And these, are, these effects are not always beneficial, but sometimes they can be. Thank you for joining me again for Mental Architecture. We'll be back again next week, continuing our discussion with the effects of mental illness on time perception. So that follows up very nicely with this uh, segment because we continue with altered mental states and how people's time perspective can change during those states. Please like and comment if you have any questions or remarks and be sure to subscribe down here and I will see you again next week. Take care. Have a great day.